Well, 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 back at it again with more coverage in the Diddy case today. Lots and lots and lots of comparisons between Diddy and to an even greater extent, Epstein. In this video today, we're going to deep dive into that federal, what is now being known to be a sex trafficking investigation involving Diddy. Shed more light today on raids, allegations, and the potential implications of the case. As you know, celebrities left and right are going crazy trying to hide themselves from having any level of involvement. Now, last week's widespread news coverage showed federal agents conducting searches on Diddy's residences in Miami and Los Angeles, and these actions were in the wake of legal accusations against the hip hop mogul encompassing sex crimes drug charges, and firearm violations. One of the things that I think is most interesting about what Diddy's doing the past couple of days is he was just out playing top golf with his daughters. Top golf is just average place people hang out at. He's just out there hitting golf balls with his daughter. All right, first off. Yesterday, he's seen just driving his bicycle, literally a bicycle, around Miami. It's almost like he's sending a message uh, to the federal agents. I'm not scared of you. I'm not hiding. I'm out riding my bike. I'm out here playing golf with my daughter at Top Golf. Now, Nicole Parker, who's a former FBI agent, offers expertise on the matter. She said that there's limited options available to Diddy if there happens to be evidence of unlawful conduct that is uncovered. She emphasized the gravity of the situation, especially considering the recent Jeffrey Epstein scandal and the unlikelihood of resolving such serious allegations get this outside of the courtroom. We're going to explore today the background of the accusations, including that civil suit that's star, uh, uh, filed by R&B star Cassie. She alleged several years of sexual abuse, subsequent claims by other alleged victims, music producer Rodney Jones' lawsuit against Diddy for manipulating him into engaging with sex workers, it complicates his struggles. Now, there certainly, in my opinion, is a lot to be said about this case. We have a poll going in the chat. If you haven't voted, please go vote in that poll. 100% of you guys so far thinks he is guilty. Okay. So that's just that. 100% of you guys actually think that Diddy is guilty. Um, as you guys are tuning in too, I'd love for you uh, to leave a comment down in the comment section letting me know where you're watching from. I'm coming to you live from beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. That bad boy right there is called the Batman Building. And uh, just so glad to be on the stream with you. As you're letting me know where you're watching from, I do want to let you know we're totally crowdfunded, which means we depend on the crowd, you guys, the people watching, to help us continue the great work that we're doing on this channel, you can support today through PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. Uh, you can also support through Super Sticker or Super Chat. And we already had some people doing what we call pre-boarding Amy Heights. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Patty Davila, good to see you, Patty. I hope you are doing well. Cat Joy, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jennifer Swain, pre-boarding in progress. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for your tremendous support. All right. Now, saw this article on the Music Times saying Diddy's sex trafficking probe. It says the extensive federal sex trafficking investigation involving Diddy. If it uncovers dubious activities, he will find it challenging to find his way out of trouble. Searches prompted a series of legal accusations. FBI agent Nicole Parker emphasized limited options available. She said you can pay folks off in civil lawsuits to make them go away. That doesn't work in criminal investigations, especially in a federal level when it comes to sex trafficking. In November 2023, a civil suit was filed by Cassie alleging abuse. The suit was quickly resolved within a day, yet following this, by the way, when it says it's resolved in a day, I want to know how much for. Did he pay? How many people think he paid Cassie $100 million? She files a lawsuit, and he realizes this is going to be a bad problem. So he's like, you know what? I'll pay you $100 million to get rid of this. I mean, I had for it to be gone in a day, I'm just saying, either that or he had some dirt on her. I think it's probably one or the other. 
Either she got a huge payday or he had some dirt on her. And now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm probably I'm actually thinking it's probably the second thing, considering what we know about Diddy, the fact that Diddy had over a hundred hidden cameras in his home. Uh, I don't even know how it would be legal, especially like I guess you can put cameras in your home wherever you want, but can you ask, can you put cameras, for example, in a bathroom in your home? Especially when you're like a party home and you're known for having lots of guests. I mean, does that seem that seems that seem that doesn't seem legal to me? Like that people would be you'd have guests that unwillingly would be recorded in the restroom or the bathroom of your house without knowing. I feel like that would be illegal. I you know, I don't know if it is or not, but I feel like it is. So I don't know. Notably, one woman disclosed that the Bad Boy Records mogul had sexually assaulted her at the age of 17, which obviously is underage, depending on the state, but most states. In February, a legal complaint was initiated by Rodney Jones, saying he had issues there. But there are some parallels that's drawing a comparison between Diddy and Epstein. Epstein was a prominent financier with a history of sexual offenses who leveraged his influential connections to secure a favorable deal during a federal investigation in 07, Epstein managed to sidestep federal prosecution by admitting guilt to a state charge of soliciting prostitution from a minor. After serving a brief 18-month sentence, the notorious offender enjoyed freedom until 2019 when federal authorities apprehended him on sex trafficking charges, unveiling the full scope of the horrendous acts that he was obviously participating in. The aftermath of the Epstein scandal looms large, making it clear that evading legal scrutiny will not be as simple as having money or influential connections. After the Epstein debacle, folks, you know, you won't be able to just make these cases disappear. They'll use a lot of the same evidence to build their case. Anyone is innocent until proven guilty, but the evidence is mounting. She further emphasized that if the investigation leads to a legal battle in court, there will be no confidentiality agreement. And I think this the kind of thing that needs to be happening is that when evil, nasty things like this are happening in our culture, the world needs to know about it. Okay. I'm power. That when evil, nasty things like this are happening, and and this is somebody that every you know, not me, but let's just say a large percentage of people around the world were looking at this person um as uh an influence in their life and he was influencing through music and films and tv and whatever that else he did it's a problem he's a billionaire he's making that money from somewhere okay because he's carrying influence and if he's doing sex trafficking if he's um holding other celebrities hostages by putting them in compromising situations and filming it on hidden cameras all throughout his house significant problem in my opinion it's a significant problem, and it needs to be dealt with. And so Nancy Grace uh, talks today about the uh, potential of a grand jury and uh, how he was luring victims onto his yacht. So we'll just talk about that. Cat Joy, thank you so much uh, for that amazing super sticker. You are awesome. And by the way, guys, I'm one of the things that I've never understood is the whole yacht culture. Do you know how expensive yachts are? I mean, I guess if you have so much money, like the price of a yacht, it doesn't even you don't e it doesn't even register with you. But I just think about yachts and the value that you get out of them. In my opinion, is not what their price tags are. A jet, I can understand a jet. You have a private plane; it makes sense. If you've flown private before, you understand it's much a much better and different situation. If you are on a yacht? I don't understand it. Some yachts are five hundred million dollars. Think about that: five hundred million dollars. It's insane. To Elon Musk, who has two hundred and fifty billion dollars, okay, five hundred million really isn't that much. But to every other person in the world that I know, five hundred million seems like a lot of money to me. Amy Hyde says, Naomi's ticket to ride with us. Thank you, Naomi, for that amazing ticket to ride. Or privilege, excess, wealth, whatever you want, when you want it, how you want it. Sean Puffy 
comes. Of course, I could be talking about Jeffrey Epstein. The two have very disturbing similarities, both using their privilege, their fame, their fortune to mistreat and abuse young women if these allegations are true. In the last hours, many comparisons have been made to the disgraced, now dead, financial guru, Jeffrey Epstein. After a, a very intricate web, all built in order for him to obtain, procure, and molest young girls with a fleet of people working for him. Hence, person number one, Jelaine Maxwell, who is now behind bars. But think about it. Immense power, wealth, prestige. No one around them speaking out ever. Traveling freely across the U.S., keeping homes in California, in New York, in Florida. Yachts that take them onto the high seas outside of U.S. jurisdiction in the international waters. Oh, that's why they get yachts. Hmm, now it makes sense. So they can get themselves on a little piece of floating luxury and away from any laws that are going to hold them responsible. Hmm, now I know why people get yachts. So they don't have to listen to the laws of the land. And important from my perspective right now, surveillance cameras. According to sources, there are literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of hours of surveillance video of Sean Combs and his staff committing wrongdoing. This while one of the most iconic music figures in our lifetime, Sean Combs, has issued a statement where he rails about character assassination and how he has been mistreated. Let me tell you, as a crime victim myself, he doesn't know his rear end from a hole in the ground. If he's talking about his character assassination, with me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now, but in the face of an expanding, a widening sex traffic investigation, I want you to take a listen to our friend Dave Mack at Crime Online. Sean Combs, his girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, and rapper Jamal Shine Barrow were involved in a fight that included shots being fired at a New York nightclub in 1999. One of the victims of the shooting, Natanya Rubin, has claimed all along that Sean Combs shot her, not Barrow, and she's willing to have doctors remove a piece of bullet that is still in her face to prove it. Shine Barrow took the heat for the shooting and goes to prison for nearly nine years, while Combs is acquitted of four counts of criminal possession of a weapon and bribery. Lopez was never charged. Wow. Why do I care what happened all the way back in 1999? Because that case is now being reopened, not necessarily for a prosecution. As you will recall, Sean Puffy Combs was acquitted in gun charges stemming out of that incident. But why do I care if it's reopened? For a lot of different reasons. And you're hearing that now a woman allegedly involved in that shooting, a nightclub shooting, is willing to have part of a bullet dug out of her face. You're seeing shots. Did she just leave the bullet in her face for this moment? In history, she's just like, you know what? I'm going to let the bullet hang around in my face for 30 years. And if the day ever comes where I have a chance to take him out, I'm going to let them scoop it on out of my face. Of uh, Combs on Rolling Stone and Billboard, a guy of, uh, of this ilk with a fortune this immense, who will be willing to speak out against him? With me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now, but straight out to Kiela Brantley, investigative reporter, DailyMail.com, who's on the story from the very beginning. If we're going all the way back to a 1999 incident, and that's the best day's work J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, ever did, 
and man, she is a superstar, is getting rid of Sean Combs. That did it. She was a beautiful, talented, up-and-coming superstar, making her way in the entertainment business. She gets tied up with Combs, and all of a sudden, people are shot. Three shooting victims, as I recall, at a nightclub in New York, and there she is hauled into the precinct. Uh Uh-uh. Bye-bye. Sadly, I don't think this case is going to end as quickly as that one did for Combs. Killa Brantley, give me the latest. So Diddy is acting, Nancy, like he is completely innocent. He came out with that statement saying he will fight to prove his innocence. And he's actually been out and about in Miami acting like he is a perfectly man. He was seen with his twin daughters golfing and then stopping by a restaurant and seen by fans. He put his signature L for brother love up to the camera. And then he was seen on a dock in Miami over the weekend, shirtless in white swimming trunks, acting as if he has no care in the world. So obviously here we're seeing somebody who hasn't taken fault for anything and will continue. Okay, to me that's classic sign of a narcissist, but that's what I was saying. He's just gallivanting around town, acting as if nothing's happened. Like he just doesn't even care. Like he's above the law. And when you have someone like him who's literally been living above the law for this long, and there comes this time where they're going to actually have to be dealt a hand that's been coming to them, they don't see it coming because they've been in sticky situations in the past and their friends in high places and their friends in low places get them out of it. And you guys know what I mean by both of that. Friends in power, friends of authority, and friends that are willing to do dirty grunt work. They have friends in both places. And uh, they pay them handsomely a lot of times, and that's what gets them off the hook. And the whole system is corrupt, boys and girls. Hate to break it to you, but our nation, our beautiful, amazing nation called the United States of America has turned into a pit hole of corruption and a banana republic. And they line their own pockets with even more money and power. And that level of greed continues to circulate around the top. 0.1% again and again and again and again and again, and they do things like this. And I think we have a gracious and merciful God who in this season is actually trying to do something powerfully about it by saying that there's still hope for the greatest nation that's ever been created, the the biggest evangelistic nation that's ever um, been uh, on the planet Earth. There's still hope. There's still hope for what God wants to do in our nation, but things like this have to happen and the people, us, have to have a good response to it. And the problem is that a lot of times there's, I guarantee you he that Diddy has his own fan base. He has, you know, 10 million monthly listeners right now on Spotify. He has a huge fan base, people that love him, that are going to have his back no matter what. I mean, I, he could have committed the most evil crimes and they'll call the thing a witch hunt. Okay. so. It, we're kind of at a crux. We're at a crossroads. We're at decision points in our nation. And we actually have to speak truth to this. We actually have to stand up for what is right. We actually have to make decisions in our heart that we're going to um, lean on and err on the side of truth. And I'm encouraged that unlike a lot of the cases that we cover, most of the time, we don't get 98% of people thinking one way on a case. It's usually 60, 40, or 50, 50. And so I'm encouraged by the results of the poll. So for Cat Joy, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Amy Heights says truth, a simple word, just truth. And that is what it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to fight to prove his innocence. You know, has he heard about the shooting victim that has offered to have a bullet dug out of her face in order to be used against Sean Combs? I mean, because that would worry me if a person that was uh, shot in the face by me or my hench people and they want to have the bullet dug out now, all these years later, I got to ask myself, why? Why now? That doesn't concern well, I mean, him. He's had he's had a raid on his home and on his two homes, and it seems like nothing has phased him so far. So much so as on Easter, he posted a photo for the first time of his young daughter just with the caption, Happy Easter, baby love, and notably disabled the comments from that. And we can understand why. Are you telling me that he's gone dead on his social? That's hard to believe. 
Well, he did post the photo and again, acts like nothing's wrong, uh, but he doesn't want any comments. He, you can imagine what kind of comments would be posted under that photo. You know, uh, also in the past days, his son has come out and demanded everyone, quote, stop the lying. I guess he thinks the feds are lying and all of their crimes. Guys, you're seeing video that was given to us by our friend Harvey Levin over at TMZ. This is immediately after the search of one of Sean Puffycomb's home. And you're looking at about, I don't know, maybe one hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 worth of sneakers alone. Uh, running shoes. Yeah. That said, there's a lot of complaining that the, the feds, yay, you know you're in trouble when the feds roll up to your front yard in an armored vehicle wearing Kevlar. Mm -hmm. Now they're complaining they, they messed the place up. I, I'm surprised it wasn't more ransacked than that. Looking for secret hidey holes, false walls, you name it. I remember a case I prosecuted where I had my invaluable dog witness. There was a fake wall in a drug lord's home. And the dog, my star witness, kept hitting on the wall. And there was nothing to see until they... And how, how is the dog her witness? Okay. Figured out it was fake wall. And then behind the fake wall was a stash of well over a million dollars worth of cocaine, uh, automatic weapons, it, bad, bad. And this was about mm, less than a mile from an elementary school. So I'm surprised Combs' home wasn't more torn up than what we're seeing. Now, speaking of what we are seeing from our friends over at TMZ, take a listen to this. The Combs investigation is drawing comparisons to that of Jeffrey Epstein after Rodney Little Rod Jones' lawsuit was filed. Jones accuses Combs of sexually assaulting him and other victims on multiple occasions. Combs' yacht is also drawing comparisons to Jeffrey Epstein as Combs is accused of luring victims onto a yacht he rents for trips to the Virgin Islands and sexually assaulting guests on the yacht. With me, as I said, an all-star panel, and right now we're going to break it down. Nobody thought that Jeffrey Epstein would ever go to jail. Prince Andrew didn't. I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat, but I can guarantee you when Clinton was taking a walk with Epstein in front of God and everybody, I bet he didn't ever think Epstein's going to jail. I bet all those high-powered uh, politicos, royalty, you name it, never believed it. Their good friend Jeffrey Epstein would not only go to jail, but end up killing himself according to reports, over sex claims. Is that what we're seeing now? I want the panel to hear this and jump in. To you, Nima Romani joining me, uh, former federal prosecutor, which is what I'm interested in right now. Also the president of West Coast Trial Lawyers and high profile trial attorney in that jurisdiction. Nima, think about it. Nobody ever thought Epstein would go down, right? But look at the comparisons. I'm very intrigued by the fact that they both used yachts. They both would travel into international waters to wrongfully do their deeds. Now, all of this amounts to allegations against Combs. Nothing has been proven. It has been proven against Epstein. Private planes, private yachts, taking them again into international waters outside the U.S. jurisdiction. That does not mean the long arm of the law cannot reach them. But their modes of travel, remember the so-called Lolita Express that Epstein used and had a lot of high-profile uh, politicians and stars uh, on his plane that he would take to his private island. The homes that I find very interesting, Nima Romani, are in California, Florida, and New York, and beyond. Why? Why is that apparently their choice of where these activities and nefarious activities are taking place? We got to examine that, Nima. What is interesting about that also is the use of hidden cameras. We believe, and according to a witness, is catching literally thousands of hours of what could be state's exhibit number one. Jump in, Nima. 
in the Epstein case, you have to give credit to the victims like Virginia Jufri, who wouldn't let the story go after Alex Acosta gave him a sweetheart deal. And here, really, it started with Cassie Ventura, and then others have come forward. Now, we know that abusers, people that sexually abuse young women, they often use intermediaries or others to groom the victims. And obviously, we know about Ghislaine Maxwell, but here you have his chief of staff, Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Horam, who's alleged and named in Little Rod's lawsuit. And of course, he is really the impetus for, I think, these search warrants. He's the one that talked about these hidden cameras throughout the residences. He's the one who identified names of other rich and powerful people like Cuba Gooding Jr., who are allegedly involved in all this. So we know that Diddy had a lot of connections here in Los Angeles, where I will live, in Miami, in New York, business connections. And I wouldn't be surprised if these allegations are proven, Nancy, that there's other rich and famous people who are involved in this, much like Jeffrey Epstein. I agree. I think there's going to be lots of rich and famous people involved in this, which means there's going to be lots of rich and famous people trying to shut this down, okay? Hey, Jennifer Swain, Cat Joy with a double, triple whammy. Amy Heights and Joanne Bowerly, thank you guys for hopping aboard our super sticker train. We set a goal of 20 on the super sticker train, so just super excited about that. I'm sure we're going to get there. We're up to six now. we got 14 left. Man, we never heard anything more about those so-called hidden cameras in Epstein's place. We never really heard everything in the little black book full of names and clients accordingly in Giselle Maxwell's possession. Will that be the same here? Is anybody actually going to prosecute Combs? Because we've heard a lot about searches and raids by home security investigators. Where's the charge? Because Nima, uh, I was a Fed for three years, and you were a Fed much longer than that. When the state moves on a search warrant, they've got you. They got you by the, let me think of a nice way to say it, by the short hairs. It's over. By the time they pull up on your block, it's done. You might as well start working on a guilty plea right then. So what's the holdup? Why are we hearing all about the raids and then there's no charge? Oh, I think the indictment is happening any day now, Nancy. And you're right, times are changing. You know What was tolerated before the Epstein's, R. Kelly's of the world, Weinstein's, you name it. I mean, they are going down. I mean, this is something that federal prosecutors are now taking very seriously. We know the Southern District of New York is quarterbacking. They're the best of the best. So they have probable cause at PC to get search warrants executed by a federal judge. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're presenting the case to the grand jury this week. You know, Diddy may seem comfortable on social media and in the shorts and golfing, but he's likely going to be arrested in a matter of days. Believe it. In a matter of days, into sexual assault allegations against Sean Combs is bringing up similar details to the Jeffrey Epstein investigation, where it was determined Epstein was aided in his abuse by his girlfriend, Elaine Maxwell. The Rodney Lil Rod Jones lawsuit alleges Sean Combs has an aide who plays a similar role to what Maxwell did for Epstein in helping procure potential victims for Combs. The Jones lawsuit further alleges there's evidence of the sexual assaults and sex trafficking as hidden cameras record everything throughout the Combs homes, which is why homes in L.A. and Miami were raided. Guys, right now, is an indictment prepared and ready to take to a vote for a grand jury? With me an all-star panel, but I'm going to run right back to Nima Romani. This is how it works. We've all heard the phrase, you could get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you this. Whoever is leading the grand jury, and I presented to a grand jury for months and months and months, you bring in typically one witness, if you can, one witness, preferably the lead investigator, and they give a recap to the grand jury, which typically, uh, depending on the jurisdiction, is 20 to 40-ish people on the voter registration that live in that jurisdiction, i.e. that county or that district. They listen to the witness. They rarely ask questions. Sometimes they do. And then the witness leaves. Bam, vote. That's called a true bill or an indictment. If they decide not to indict, which is probably at the request of the prosecutor, it's a no bill. 
no bill of indictment. Are you telling me, Nima Romani, you believe the indictment, the federal grand jury indictment has already been drawn up, in other words, typed out with all the counts, and it's waiting for a grand jury presentment or vote or to be made public? Oh, Nancy, I do. That indictment has been drafted. If you're the feds, you don't go into someone's home like Diddy unless you're ready to indict. And this is why. First of all, we saw that armed law enforcement presence. Violence may ensue. But from a legal perspective, from a case perspective, people may disappear. They may flee the jurisdiction and evidence may be destroyed. Those search warrants are the final. Guys, I hate to say it. I think the bad boy record label exec himself already destroyed evidence. I think that he had insider information that something was coming down the pipe. I think he put whatever, um, probably hard drives. That's what I think. Probably hard drives from security cam footage, etc. I think he put all kinds of things like that onto his plane in Los Angeles, took off and flew to Miami where he put even more evidence onto his plane and then took his plane and flew it to Antigua and dropped the evidence in the middle of the ocean. That's probably what happened. Okay. Uh, I think he probably had a plan. If someday this happens and he has it all figured out ahead of time, if they're going to come, if there's an indictment, if there's this or that, this is our game plan. Immediately do this. That deletes all these files. Immediately do this. That gets rid of that. Immediately do this. That does that. Immediately send this secret text to all of these celebrities that we have this dirt on, blah, blah, blah. Like he probably had a panic button. And then he gets word that he's about to be raided by HSI and in Miami and in Los Angeles, and all of a sudden, boop, panic button, and then they execute it. That's what I think happens personally. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's what I think happens. Patty Davila, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cat Joy, thank you for that double whammy. Mish Michelle says, happy to catch you live. P. Diddy's going down, y'all. And it, that leads me to the question, Mish Michelle, it's good to see you. It leads me to the question. In the chat, put it, when do you think he'll be arrested? They said, undoubtedly, he's going to be arrested. Operating under that premise, do you think it'll be in one week, one month, or one year? Put it in the comments section. Uh, Patricia says, the hidden is going to be revealed, praying for the victims. That's what we need to be doing, praying for those victims, for sure. Renee, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Rebecca says, yet no one from the Epstein case was ever tried or convicted. I know, I hate that. That's the craziest part of all of it. You said, funny how Hollywood money can hide evil truths actually it's not funny it's repulsive hence my using youtube and van on primetime movies exactly it's like i, I try to st stay clear of primetime movies and celebrities as well for all of that reason and above and what you've seen actually is a power shift because of the governmental policies in california away from hollywood in the states like georgia where they're doing favorable tax advantage situations for people that are making high budget films and a lot of film industry has moved they've actually moved their headquarters uh, some of you guys have seen this to uh georgia to atlanta step of the investigation because when you're the feds you have the luxury of waiting when you're conducting these proactive investigations you're not reacting to law enforcement already arresting someone and you're stuck with the case you have the luxury of making sure that all those witnesses are interviewed. Maybe they're put in front of the grand jury. You have all the counts and everything you need because once you execute that search warrant, you put your target on notice and you don't want to do that until you're ready. And I believe the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York is ready right now to prosecute Sean Cohen. Guys. I want to show you, oh yeah, you're seeing a video given to us by our friend uh, Harvey Levin at TMZ, and it's right after the search at one of Combs' residence. I'd like to see, Liz, the photo of one of the parties that Sean Combs threw. Sean, Puffy, okay, there's that one where everybody's partying, and the other one is the one I'm trying to get to. Yeah, there, okay, hold it, hold it. Where it says censored is a lady with no pants on, and that is her rear end and genitals. Right there in the party. Okay, but I don't care about that. The mirror you're seeing, the round, the circular mirror, and there's a guy right below it. 
Hench person. Hench person. Just like Jelaine Maxwell was a hench person for Epstein, this is Moy Bon. Moy Bon, if you'll see right here, we had to actually draw a diagram, a flow chart, so to speak, of all the people connected to this case. And there he is on your bottom right, Moy Bon. You think He's not rolling over right now. To Robert Crispin joining me, former Federal Task Force Officer for U.S. DOJ, that's Department of Justice, with the DEA in the Miami Field Division. Never a lack of business there. Former Homicide and Crimes Against Children investigator, now at CrispinInvestigations.com. Robert, one question for now. <laughs> you think all the people we just showed on that flowchart aren't begging to sing for a plea deal. I mean, I'd have my lawyer on the phone yesterday working a deal so I wouldn't spend the next 50 years in the penitentiary. Listen, they know it's coming and they're trying to get the best seat in the house and they're going to these prosecutors saying, what can I give you? Let's sit down, let's talk because those chairs are gonna fill up really fast once this thing starts to unwind and once people start getting arrested. But if I can back up just two seconds about that search warrant, you know, I, I'm not real sure that an indictment is going to come out this quickly because there's a lot of electronics that were taken. And I will tell you from doing multiple federal search warrants and taking a lot of electronic devices, that stuff takes time to go through systematically. You got to retrieve data that's been deleted. And ironically, the hidden cameras that were in, you know, in, in Diddy's house are probably going to be the same cameras that are going to sink him. Hey, 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 Crispin, <laughs> you think the feds haven't done everything you just said except the cameras? Because if they had gotten the cameras, uh, Combs, I know you're on a first name basis with Sean P. Uh, Combs, but that said, I'm not. Combs and his staff would know if those cameras had been seized off a yacht or uh, at his locations where he lives, his domiciles. We don't know that yet, but everything you just talked about, I guarantee you the feds have done. I would not be surprised if they haven't been wiretapping him. I mean, they go all the way, Crispin, as you well know from your prior investigations. And I'm telling you, they would not have made a public raid, a simultaneous raid with assault weapons if they were not ready on their indictment. Those raids were used to support the indictment they've already drawn up. When I say drawn up, it's because you, a person, writes out the indictment. They may then later type it. But you write out the charges you think you can prove, and then you support it with the evidence. I guarantee you they've got the indictment ready to go. They're either waiting on a vote, or they've already had a grand jury vote, and they're waiting to go public. That's what I think is happening. Now, what is the fallout? How is Combs behaving? Because a jury could take into account what occurred before, during, and after. To Dr. John Delatore joining me, a psychologist, mediator, specializing in forensic psychology, a witch hunt, you know, that, that's what always happens. When you have the crap coming at you, what do you do? You put it in a ball and you throw it back like a snowball at whoever threw it to start with. That's what's happening here. Witch hunt, it's like focus off all the evidence and focus on me. I'm being persecuted. That's what that is. Yeah, that's 100% what that is. And that's part of being, that's part of the, 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 the motif, right? The, the thematic elements that it means to be an abuser. It's making the other person, the victims or whoever it is that, that's coming after you, making them the villains because in your mind, you haven't done anything wrong. Now, we don't know how he is actually responding when there aren't cameras around. I'm pretty sure he's furious in contacting his attorney about getting this thing fixed because in his mind, he's been able to get away with this for so long that he's forgotten that all of this stuff is abusive. He's forgotten all that stuff is unlawful. He doesn't care that all of this stuff has hurt so many people and you guys think diddy's a narcissist let me know in the comment section i have a feeling that he is based on his carefree behavior following these major major raids of his house cat joy thank you renee thank you and cat joy and joanne barley thank you for gifting 
those memberships. We're up to 15 on our super sticker train, five away uh, from reaching our goal. And by the way, if you're new to our channel, I want to encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe. If you hit that subscribe button, it's going to just keep you in the loop of uh, all of these streams that we're doing about Diddy and other topics that are relevant. And we're going to continue to the best of our ability, creating great content around uh, topics that really matter. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're able, hit that subscribe button. He's contributed to so many further abuses of individuals who've probably already been abused in their lives. He didn't care about any of that stuff. The only thing he ever cared about was himself and what he could get from other people. Oh, yeah. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific, and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it. But it's since then, I've been like, Yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. <laughs> There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day, but it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood and nobody wants to live there. So for those of you who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. We want to be happy. And we really want to forget the trauma. So there's that. That makes sense. You are hearing Tamika Ray, former backup dancer for Sean Combs on Instagram. She states, I'll probably never tell this. Maybe I'll write a book. Well, how about to a grand jury? because I would sure like to find out what she is talking about that was so upsetting and traumatizing that, frankly, right now, she can't even talk about it. She just wants to live her life and be happy. What happened? What does she know? What does everybody around Sean Combs know that they don't want to say? In a career that has been marked by murder, untimely deaths, and prison, now, finally, are we at the point where a grand jury indictment is going to be handed down? If you saw him uh, in the last few days, you'd think Sean Puffy P. Diddy Combs has not a care in the world. I don't know if that's true. Um, joining me, Kayla Brantley, uh, investigative reporter, DailyMail.com. But first, to Shannon Henry, president and founder of SAS, S-A-S-S, -S, Surviving Assault, Standing Strong, a nonprofit whose mission is to eradicate sex trafficking and violence against women and girls globally. Shannon Henry, I know that a lot of times SAS, your group, deals with pimps, um, sex trafficking, massage parlors, nail parlors, where you unearth the dregs of society, taking advantage of underage girls and women that can't speak for themselves. I, I guess it's pretty rare that you get a media and music mogul, literally a music icon in your crosshairs. But what can you tell us about prior incidents? We're mentioning untimely deaths, shooting, prison. What? So sure, Nancy, thank you. It's, you know, We've worked with 20,000 women on four different continents. And when you're looking at the playbook, whether it's Epstein or Cosby or anyone else, there are certain criteria that they hit. Now, we know that with Sean, things have been riddled with violence, with grooming, with intimidation, physical violence, guns, pornography, underage girls, like you said, um, promises, sexual violence and abuse, emotional abuse, and his circle of croonies, who I call his buddy guards, that he pays off to keep everything quiet and intimidate other people in order to maintain control. But we do know about two incidents that have occurred also where there have been shootings, whether it was at the nightclub or it was at the recording studio. It just seems like no matter where he is, New York, L.A., um, the Virgin Islands, uh, Miami, whether he's on a yacht or he's in a car or he's at the studio, bad things happen when he's around. That's a great point. It's like no matter what's been going on in, in the story of Diddy, it seems to always lead in bad things happening. It's a great point. The photos we're seeing right now, apparently, uh, we're seeing blood and evidence of some sort of a struggle 
Does that have something to do with his son, Justin's friend? It does. They call him Mr. What G happened? inside. Sure. So there was an argument. Um, this is all according to Little Rod, and it was in his court documents. Um, when all of this came to be, he was sitting about two feet from the incident. He heard yelling. Sean and his son were in a room along with Mr. G. And then when they came out, it was clear that there was blood. He heard the gunshots. He was afraid for his own life, tried to help, according to the documents, and was told not to. Um, this man was bleeding from several areas in his body. Uh, the police were called to come in and help, but the ambulance stayed several blocks away, according to the documents again, um, because they were worried about an active shooter, because they were told that this was a drive-by. Guys, I want you to take a listen to Aubrey O'Day, Uncle Luke, and Cat Williams speaking out. Listen. Um, I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me, mm. not talent-wise, but in other areas. So what was expected of her? You're hearing Aubrey O'Day of making the band three. That's what I was uh, wondering. Kella Brantley, what is she talking about? I wasn't willing to do what was expected of me, not talent-wise, but other areas. Yeah, what was expected of her? Well, now with these allegations, you can infer that it was likely something sexual. And like Aubrey O'Day and like Tamik Gray, these are stories that you're probably going to hear a lot more of. People are going to come out with their own stories of Diddy. And it's very interesting because that does remind me of Jeffrey Epstein. And it does remind me of Harvey Weinstein in that this was all just an open secret that in these Hollywood elite circles, people knew of this behavior. But of course, there's intimidation tactics. Of course, there's alleged blackmail. So we will likely hear m many more stories, but it just depends if these people are willing to come forward when it matters most. So check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, I hate we this. can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. Signed Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we're going to go full, but full crazy. We're going crazy. You were saying as a young boy, Justin Bieber with Combs, that is from Combs' YouTube channel. What would be a 15-year-old boy's dream that he's talking about? I'm not sure I want to know that right now. But I, I, I want to focus on what we're hearing, Kayla Brantley, joining us from DailyMail.com. In the last 48 hours, 50 Cent, 50, has gone crazy on social media. Why? So 50 Cent's ex, Daphne Joy, they share a 12-year-old son together. She was named in the Little Rod lawsuit as a sex worker for Diddy. And 50 Cent, they are not on good terms. He has been trolling Diddy since this began. And now he's come out hitting out against his ex, Daphne Joy, which she has completely denied. So now even more players are getting involved. I'm just wondering, Nima Romani, all the people that say they're not willing to speak out. For instance, the one backup singer who says she doesn't want to talk about it. Not that I blame her. But these are people that are going to get called to grand jury because they're out there. They're putting it on social media. That's low-hanging fruit for the feds. Oh, there's no question they're going to get grand jury subpoenas. And whether they want to or not, they're going to have to testify. So obviously, if you're a prosecutor, you want to be sensitive to a victim of sex abuse. And to the extent that you don't need them, maybe you don't put them in front of a trial jury. But a grand jury is a secret proceeding, meeting with prosecutors. Those meetings happen behind closed doors. So that's going to happen whether the victim wants to or not. You know, a lot of people rail Nima Romani against, quote, secret grand jury proceedings. There's 
There's nothing at all unconstitutional about a secret grand jury proceeding. Hearsay is allowed in grand jury proceedings. As you just correctly pointed out, hearsay is not allowed in front of a pettit jury, which is a jury of 12 or a smaller petite jury. Uh, and the rules of evidence come into play. They're not in play at a grand jury. So what happens at the grand jury may remain secret forever, although at some point the defense has access to the grand jury transcript so they can see who, what, where, why, when occurred in the grand jury proceedings. Um, I want you to now listen to Uncle Luke on We in Miami. Did you party with Diddy a lot? Oh, uh, no, not really. I would go to the party and, and leave early. I don't know what goes on after part after I was, but he wasn't trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> Does anybody on this panel believe that? What about it, Delatory? Th there you've got Uncle Luke on We in Miami who's partying with Diddy and goes, Well, you know, I leave I leave early and I go home and read a book. BS. Nobody left early. Did you see those party pictures? Nobody's leaving. Yeah, it's certainly, that's what I call it certainly doesn't a witness. Look like, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like anybody's leaving early. Although I can kind of see sort of part of where this joke is, where it's an open secret, where they're starting to say, listen, I already know that this guy's a bad guy. I don't want to be lumped in with all of this stuff. So I'm just going to keep my mouth closed. I'm going to keep my eyes closed. I'm not going to say anything. Because in some instances, there might be retribution to be paid if you started saying things out of turn. Maybe not, maybe not now, but certainly back then when, when Diddy still had some power and influence and can and, and, uh, do these kinds of things. We see violence and shooting is not outside of Diddy's realm. So it's certainly possible that some of these people are saying this kind of stuff in order to keep themselves safe. Delatory, I don't know what you're saying. When... Combs did have power and influence. He's got power and influence right now. His uh, estimated worth is over $1 billion. And everyone seemingly is afraid to speak out. Uh, you've got these lawsuits, which really cracked the case wide open. But this is a guy who has a, an empire, a clothing line, a liquor line, uh, founder of Bad Boy Records, uh, millions and millions of dollars of property holdings. Although I read Kayla Brantley this weekend, he is up to his neck and hot to over $100 million on all of his properties around the world. What do you know? So DailyMail.com revealed that he actually took out eight mortgages for his three properties, one in Los Angeles, which was raided, and his two side-by-side -side mansions in Miami, which were also raided. Um, now he owes over $140 million is what he took out, and he still owes $100 million on them roughly. And these have to be paid out within the next few years, if not you know, from now until the next 10 years. And obviously now he's up to his neck in legal fees that he will be having to pay soon. So unclear um, what he's going to do about that, but he is allegedly a billionaire, but we'll see when the time comes. A lot has been made about trafficking allegations in the last 48 hours. Sean Puffy Combs, AKA Diddy, seems to be unaffected. Um, this is what I would do right now, Nima Romani, if I were prosecuting this case, if they haven't already done it, and I imagine that they have, I would get the hench person who is allegedly Moy Bon, the hench person and the drug mule. One of Combs' alleged drug mules. I would get the two of them, and I would get them in a room, not together, of course, and I would offer them a deal in order to get testimony and eyewitness accounts of anything and everything they could tell me. What about it, Nima? You're going to have to have. I mean, uh, Combs has already walked. He was acquitted on guns charges, right? He has tremendous popularity with the jury. You have to have eyewitness, credible eyewitness testimony to back up your evidence if you want to win this case. Corroboration.
Well, Nancy, that's exactly how you prosecute any criminal enterprise. You flip the lower level people and you work your way up the organization. Guys, I have this suspicion that the guy that was arrested for the murder of Tupac is the one who started a lot of this flipping. I know people are saying, well, this lawsuit that came in in the Southern District of New York that was just a civil lawsuit is what actually was the linchpin or maybe the cornerstone of the starting point for this. I don't think so. I think uh, they had that guy who was arrested for the murder of Tupac behind bars, and I think he was willing to sing like a bird because he doesn't want to spend the rest of his life behind bars, and he'll throw anybody under the bus. But they needed some other evidence to corroborate what he was saying. And then whenever Cassie filed that lawsuit and then subsequently J-Rod filed a lawsuit, it made them have a little bit more information to go off of. And so uh, I actually think what they're talking about right now, you flip the lower level people. Well, I think that that's what's going on. And you flip the lower level people by arresting them, which is why they arrested that 23 year old drug mule or whatever, however old he is, the basketball playing drug mule um, that they have. Uh, Rebecca Heck just says demonic is the only words that I have for him. And I mean, you know, I think he certainly is the behavior he beha is, is using is demonic. I was looking at his Instagram uh, recently and he posted a video like four weeks ago talking about how great God is. It's just crazy to me. Cat Joy, thank you, by the way, for those super stickers. Jennifer Swain says caboose mode. Y'all are so uh, generous. And then another double whammy from Cat Joy with a special message saying love you, Tyler and the feller fam. Hugs to all. We love you. Thank you for leading the way in generosity. And Tutu says, thank you, Tyler, for such a blessed uh, channel. Well, thank you, Tutu, for being here. Really appreciate you. And thank you for your tremendous support. But I think he, I think he was, I think the guy behind bars is the one where it started with. And that graphic was there. And so we know the alleged drug meal, Paul. I mean, he has to safety valve, which means he has to proffer truthfully. Otherwise, he's looking at a mandatory minimum sentence. Obviously, Bond, if you're caught up in sex trafficking, a conspiracy to sex traffic minors or produce child pornography, you're looking at 10 or 15 year mandatory minimum sentences. And the only way he's going to get out from that is if he cooperates. So you're right, Nancy. It's jurors love celebrities. And he's got a very good lawyer, Aaron Dyer. I used to work with him. He's a former AUSA. So he's not going to take any type of deal. So if you're going to prosecute this case, as the feds, you got to make sure you flip all those other individuals and make them testify against your real target. And that's Sean Combs. While Sean Combs' estates were being raided, sons King Combs and Justin Combs were detained during the raids. And now King Combs is speaking out about his detainment and the sex assault scandal engulfing his father on Instagram, saying, stop with the cap, which is slang for quit lying. The post is apparently in response Stop to with allegations the about his father, but the somewhat cryptic message might also be directed at Sean Combs' accusers. I'll pick up with what the state can make of that in closing arguments. But now to Kayla Brantley, investigative reporter joining us from DailyMail.com. Kayla, we're talking about grand jury proceedings, which I believe have probably already taken place. But if they haven't, who is a single witness you believe the state will call to testify in front of a grand jury? I think the best witness here would be Cassie. She was his girlfriend for 10 years with obvious intimate knowledge of how he works, all the ins and outs, they must have lived together. Um, and she really was the catalyst that really set all of this out. She, once she filed her lawsuit, it was then that three other women came forward, that Lil Rod came forward, who would also make an excellent, excellent witness. So if I had to pick one, I would say Cassie's the way to go. Guys, it's Kayla Brantley joining us, investigative reporter, DailyMail.com. Shannon Henry joining us, president and founder of Surviving Assault, standing strong. Way in, Shannon. I also want people to understand that these people that are coming forward are so extremely brave. There is no promise on the return of their disclosure. They're risking everything, their reputation, their career, their assets, their sleep, their family, their friends everything hangs in the balance and that I hope that when it does come down to that moment where these these people are able to be heard and their voices are able to be listened to that the things that often people use against um, survivors things like drug and alcohol use which is a coping mechanism not necessarily a healthy one but it is a coping mechanism and their gaps in recall which just proves that they were trying to survive something really traumatic and logic was shut down in that moment 
I hope that all of this will be used, not only to honor these people for what they've done and how they've come forward, but to prove the guilty party is Diddy and the croonies that he surrounded himself with. Shannon Henry, we've been talking about uh, responses from Combs's camp. We've been talking about potential grand juror witnesses. But I think one thing that's gotten lost in the sauce is what sex attack victims go through when you're essentially coerced. You may not be beaten, but you're coerced into unwanted sex acts. Many women never make a comeback from that. Like you, you heard the one woman earlier uh, saying she, she can't even talk about it. She doesn't want to remember it because she's trying to be happy. And you know what I hate, Shannon? I hate when somebody out of the blue brings up to me my fiance's murder. I hate that. Why? Because I could be having a perfectly happy day with my two children that I have now that I thought I would never have. And then suddenly it's like somebody throws a bucket of wet, ice cold, a bucket of ice cold water right in my face. It reminds me of the worst thing one of the worst things that has ever happened to me. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to remember it. It's so traumatic. Explain it. You may be on a yacht and you may be given a whole bunch of money and, uh, but it doesn't take away what you were forced to do. It doesn't take it away. And our bodies immediately go back and access the smells, the sights, the sounds from that moment. And then our physical response happens where we feel like we need to run or fight or hide. And so for these victims that are now going through all of this so publicly, this is what they're experiencing on a daily basis. We wait as the investigation into Deshaun Puffy Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, unfolds. But right now we pause and we remember an American hero, Chief Deputy Sheriff Ken Prorock. Wow. Well, a lot going on in this case. Um, let's pray for the victims as they're just saying there's so much trauma that many of them are going through. Let's just take a second and pray for them. I believe in prayer. If you're watching now and you even need prayer, you put it in the comment section and we'll, our um, ministry here will love to pray for you. But uh, Lord, we know that there's a lot of people um, that are dealing with after effects of uh, terrible cases like this coming to light and then having to deal with this trauma. And I just speak peace to their soul that post-traumatic stress disorder can turn into post-traumatic growth disorder that where they've seen problems and hiccups in their life, um, that Father, you can actually use it as a catalyst for good. And so instead of them running or hiding or, or um, having to endure and relive trauma, that instead it gives them an upper hand that the devil thought he had one way, but God, you have another way and you take what the enemy meant for harm and you use it for good. And I just declare there's good coming to people's lives. I declare for people watching right now who've been stuck in trauma, that they can have a release valve from that with you, that you will cause good from the bad. And I just release now in the mighty name of Jesus through the blood of what you did on your cross with your sacrifice that we actually step into the perpetual year of favor, the year of Jubilee, the year, God, where we get to live in your grace. And I just release that over people watching now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And there's some of you I know as I was praying that the Holy Spirit actually touched you. And uh, I just bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, thank you guys for tuning into the stream. Usually on Fridays, we do something called Faith Friday. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that tomorrow because I have a men's conference that I'm hosting at my church. And so I'm not going to be able to do Faith Friday until Faith Saturday, Saturday service, I guess that's what we can call it. Um, so unfortunately, it, very rare for us not to be able to do Faith Friday on Faith Friday. But tomorrow, I won't be doing Faith Friday because I'm hosting the men's conference. Saturday, I will. So I hope to see you guys on Saturday for a soulful Saturday. I don't know. We can just come up with a name for it. Um, but thank you guys for being on the stream. And I will see you back uh, very, very soon.